my um, grandfather just took me to a, a kind of swap meet and I purchased an old photograph of a waterfall and I can kind of live with this photograph. It was a long exposure of a waterfall. The seed for making this body of work started a long time ago and it also began in the west coast. Um, this series of landscapes not that I refer to as full moons um, I started maybe 12 years ago and in order to make a full moon photograph I needed to go beyond the urban I needed to get away from light pollution I took a trip to Uganda and went and climbed the mountains of the moon um, otherwise well today they're known as the Renzoris this is a quite a major tourist destination in the Murkison Falls in Uganda but it was also back in the 19th century for the European explorers this would be a point where they would stop they wouldn't pass through the falls or go any further and so I, I'm using it as a kind of gateway to the land that's kind of further and beyond and this it feels like a this is almost it feels so kind of prehistoric because everything is really out of scale I mean some of these Lobelias can go up to six meters tall and it's um, a very tricky pl landscape to navigate and get through. It's um, seriously difficult hiking, um, probably the toughest in Africa, um, skipping along the bogs with a guide, um, but ultimately rewarding and absolutely beautiful. The process is very hands-on, which is good. Enjoy that. It's like a combination of working in a dark room, but also working with a palette of colour. So you have to, it's a culmination of both kind of philosophies somehow. So you can apply um, what the craft you know of mixing colour and paint and ink to, and you can break and play with the strategy of what, it's, what you need in order to print a photograph. They're very physical on appearance. They, um, they absorb the paper and the inks kind of absorb the light. Um, the image doesn't seem to sit, doesn't sit on the surface like it does with a photograph. So there's a, a, a different kind of warmth or kind of, there's a different kind of energy kind of reading through the image than you would get with a photograph. They feel more sculptural. They're kind of much more of an object. They have a different depth to them, and they're yeah. They have a kind of they have a, a sense of permanence too, somehow. Uh, Civil dawn is a very particular time. It's the time before sunrise. It's the light before the sun rises. Um, it's when the sun is about six degrees below the horizon. So um, in, the ma in the mountain of Mount Hiai, which is to the northwest of Kyoto, there are marathon monks and their practice is based on running. They set off at midnight and then to the southwest of Mount Hiai there's a lake and there's a very small time frame before dawn, civil dawn, when there's a huge amount of mist and they as they run through this mist that's the natural way of rehydration they see civil dawn as a blessing so i've been working with them for three years now running with the monks getting involved with their practice being made aware of how important this mist is to them you then that heightens that experience and that kind of opens you up to be able to make images of this kind of nature. I mean, it was actually quite a frenetic process to make these images, but that's not what you feel when you look at the images. You feel very calm and very tranquil. And